quite a few new restaurants opening in the city lately, but our food guy is particularly fond of a new one in Westtown. And rightly so. It is run by a couple of industry veterans who've created the kind of restaurant that they've always wanted to visit themselves. Steve Delinsky joining us now with the story. Pretty cool mission. Yeah. It is a cool mission. I've been twice so far, and i got to say I love everything about this restaurant, guys. Uh, once in a while, a restaurant opens and it reminds you of why you live in a big city. The menu is creative, sometimes daring, but not complicated. There's music, vinyl of course, not too loud. Staff is warm and knowledgeable, and the food, so much deliciousness, it's hard to choose. There is an exuberance in the kitchen at Maxwell's Trading, which occupies the first floor of a nondescript brick two-story building in Westtown. Cooks are busy grilling over open flames or sauteing braised vegetables under the watchful eyes of Erling Wubauer and chef Chris Jung. The goal for the owners was simple. A beautiful bar where my partner and I and our wives could sit down, have a martini and listen to records and eat kind of the food that we want to cook and the food that we want to eat. My mother is from China. Chef Chris Jung's parents are from uh, Korea. And we grew up in the big cities of America. Despite their backgrounds, the menu isn't all Asian. Start with griddle bread. Think half scallion pancake, half naan. A perfect vehicle for scooping up a house-made French onion dip with lots of chives. The French onion dip has truffle oil, chives, black pepper. There's a little bit of soy sauce in there as well. Suzuki tartar is Thai-inspired with coconut, peanut, and lemongrass, topped by large nasturtium leaves. From the starch section of the menu, a clay pot of Japanese rice for starters. On top of the rice is a five-spice braised pork belly, Swiss chard, yuba, which is tofu skin, braised shiitake mushroom, and lapchang sausage. Arriving alongside, a trio of sauces. There is a house-made sriracha and a house-made chili crisp. Plus a soy sauce his mom imports from Taiwan. There's also a fantastic Japanese sweet potato served atop a pool of mellow Thai curry. Uh, the masaman curry is just a delicious homemade curry. No cheating, made from scratch. And then we put a Japanese sweet potato on top of it that we steam for three hours. <laughs> That softened potato is layered with sugar, then brulee until the surface crackles beneath a fork. A half dozen heartier dishes feature lots of grilled items, like the half chicken a la brasa, marinated then grilled over hardwood before sliced and plated for easier eating. Black eyed peas from the south, and then it has a ginger scallion salsa verde, which is a sauce from my childhood that I grew up eating on Argyle Street. There's also a vintage bookstore and coffee shop adjacent to the dining room. You'll find honey made from the rooftop. Wu Bauer says the menu is a reflection of his team's collective experience. We call it City Food by City Kids. Right? And please save a little room for dessert. Only three on the menu, but the Basque butter cake is a crowd pleaser you can share. More information about Maxwell's trading on our website, NBCChicago.com. Just search for The Food Guy. Wow. How good did all that wow. stuff look? I'm jealous you got to eat there. It looks <laughs> yeah, so it good. Great. I want to tackle the rest of the menu. It's really... Oh. It's I had a friend who went in and they couldn't quite describe... I said, is it, is it Asian? Is it American? I guess it defies any category. It's a little bit of each of those things. Yeah. The best stuff. But that's so... Two city kids yeah. making city food. They're cooking Music good food. food. Yep. <laughs>